David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have for you a brand new entry level pen from Twisby, and that is the Twisby Go. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Twisby Go. Uh, then I'll talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, the Go enters the market as Twisby's least expensive pen, retailing for $18.99, uh, which is $10 less expensive than the Ego, which was previously Twisby's least expensive offering. Uh, in order to keep the cost of the Go down, uh, Twisby has designed some new, more kind of bare bones packaging, uh, which is right here. There is a cardboard sleeve with the Twisby logo, um, just as an aside, I mentioned this in my uh, China travel vlog, but the Twisby name is actually derived from the name of a room in the Forbidden City in Beijing. Uh, there wasn't a great deal of fountain pen related things to do on my recent trip to China, but during my trip to the Forbidden City, I was really determined to find this room. There are almost a thousand rooms in the city, so it took a while to find the specific one I was looking for. Uh, it was a bit of a maze, but after a great deal of searching, I finally found the room, the Hall of Mental Cultivation, only to discover it was closed for renovations. So here's a picture of my Twisby Diamond 580 in front of the sign telling me the room is closed. Oh well, I tried. Uh, the sleeve actually slides off. And inside here, we have a hard plastic box with an embossed Twisby logo on the front. Uh, the lid lifts off and inside, uh, there is the pen. Uh, the pen is held in here by this little piece of styrofoam. And also inside is one of the most basic uh, use and care guides you'll ever see. It's just one piece of paper uh, that shows you the filling system and uh, how the filling system works there, which is actually a new filling system for Twisby. Um, I haven't seen this mechanism on any of their previous models. And here, is the pen, the Twisby Go. Uh, this is the Sapphire version, uh, but there's another version available as well called the Smoke, which is more of a light gray. Uh, I assume that if this pen is successful for Twisby that they'll subsequently come out with an array of color variations. Um, the Go is made of plastic, uh, but I believe the pen uses two different types of plastic, and I'll, I'll let you know what I'm talking about in a little bit. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, that uh, here on the finial, uh, it has a raised Twisby emblem in red plastic. Uh, it's similar to what you find on the Eco. Uh, the emblem is surrounded by the accent color of this particular pen, which is a, a nice lighter blue. Uh, and then we have the cap. Um, the cap is made from a clear plastic, um, and I think here at the end, uh, the color transition between the, the red to the blue to then the clear cap, uh, it looks nice, especially with the blue being uh, picked back up again here on the barrel. Um, for an entry-level pen, this cap has a large number of design elements to it. Um, to begin with, it doesn't have a clip. There's a ring here on the side that can serve two purposes. Um, you can use this with a small clip on a lanyard to wear around your neck, uh, or the protrusion actually asks, uh, uh, acts as a subtle roll stop, which is nice to have on a clipless pen in order to prevent, prevent it from rolling around. Um, I had a clipless pen I took to work with me uh, actually yesterday at work and I would set it down and it would begin rolling across my desk. So I was continually looking for a specific orientation to set it down where it wouldn't roll away. Uh, I have a couple of pen pillows uh, here at home. I, I, I should probably bring one to my office. Uh, on the side of the cap here near the top in raised texture lettering, uh, it has Twisby and Go. And on the end of the cap, uh, it would be what I would call a rounded triangle. You can kind of get a good look at it here, looking straight down the pen. About halfway down the cap, there are these long triangular parts, which serve as a transition between the triangular top of the cap and the circular bottom. Uh, you can see uh, inside the cap here, there is a translucent inner cap. Uh, and that that actually serves two purposes. It's the capping mechanism, uh, and when it's capped, it actually provides a seal to better keep the nib from uh, ex uh, exposure to the air. Uh, the cap is slightly angled. Uh, there's about one millimeter difference between this end and this end, this one being about a millimeter wider. 
Um, there is a very small step down to the barrel. Uh, and then the barrel again angles down just slightly under a millimeter from beginning end to end. And on the end of the barrel, it transitions to a, the rounded triangle shape again, kind of matching the top of the cap. And there's a hole in the bottom of the barrel. Now, uh, I think the ink chamber is uh, totally sealed from this portion of the pen, so I'm unsure what the purpose of the hole is. Uh, the barrel is translucent, allowing you to see what uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen, which are the inner workings of this unique filling system. Uh, but we'll get back to that here in a minute. The cap actually snaps off to reveal this steel Yovo nib. Um, it's the same size nib that's on the Eco. Um, it's stamped with the Twisby logo and uh, Twisby's emblem. Uh, on my specific pen, however, you can see how the B in Twisby, uh, the stamping wasn't perfect, and the, in the inside outline of the B is essentially invisible. Uh, basically, it was just a poor stamping job. Uh, it doesn't affect the performance of the nib, and you really can't even notice it without a loop, but still, it would have been nice to have a higher quality stamping on the nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Um, it's interesting because uh, in the history of Twisby pens, uh, they've actually used uh, Schmidt and Bach as well as Yovo nibs. Uh, so the nib manufacturer potentially will, uh, will differ depending on how long ago your Twisby pen was purchased. All of their current pens use Yovo nibs, I believe. Um, Twisby has always made their pens very easy to disassemble. Uh, the nibs and sections just pull right out. Uh, that uh, the nib is actually keyed into this section. I don't believe I've seen that in any of their other models. What I mean by that is that you can see here that there's a little indentation in the section and that slot is exactly where the nib fits. So there's a specific orientation required when reinserting the nib and feed after you've removed it. Uh, in other Twisby models, there's no key and so you can orient the nib in any way you like when replacing it after cleaning. Now, the section is more translucent than the rest of the pen. I, I said earlier that there's two different plastics used in the Go. Uh, the section actually feels a bit softer than the rest of the pen, so I believe it's a, a slightly different compound. Uh, the softness does help you maintain a, a decent grip on the section, though. You can see here um, that it's a little tough to show uh, in a picture, but the end of the section is flared and has a triangular shape. Now. While I don't really care or mind for forced grips on pens, uh, like the Lama Safari, for example, I don't particularly care as much for this one. Now, your grip may vary, but I tend to hold my pen very close to the end of the section. And these particular flares kind of get in the way for me. So I find myself actually gripping the go a little further back than I normally would in order to avoid the end altogether. Now, Something rather odd I discovered on this specific pen. Uh, embedded in the section is a small hair or a fiber. Um, it's not on the surface or not on the inside. It's actually in the middle of the interior plastic. Now, I can't imagine that this is the norm. I've never seen anything like this in a pen before. Uh, now, I did reach out to Twisby, not to complain, mind you, more of just giving them a heads up. Um, they did offer to replace the pen, but I declined. Uh, years from now, if I feel like cloning someone Jurassic Park style, uh, I can just dig out the hair from here. Uh, so who knows? It might be useful one day. So let's take a look at this unique filling system. The barrel screws off uh, and that uh, this portion of the barrel contains the ink chamber right here. And then we have a blue piston to match the blue trim on this sapphire model. Uh, and then we have a rather prominent spring. In order to fill the go, you actually just depress the plunger uh, and then let it go and the ink gets sucked up into the chamber. Uh, it's a pretty efficient filling system. I, I've been able to get fairly full fills with only a single pump. Now it does take a fair amount of force to depress the piston. This is a rather strong spring. Um, so it really requires you to have a firm grip on the lower part of the pen, uh, whether what's with one or with two hands. Now, naturally, my hand kind of wants to hold it here at the end of the section where you can get the best grip, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily leave you a lot of room uh, when you have to actually get your uh, ink into a, a bottle. Maybe there's something that's like half full, like an Hiroshizuku bottle. You really have to kind of get it a little further in there. So 
uh, you know, it would have been a little bit nicer to have a flare or a concave bit here at the back, just to make it easier to hold the pen there during filling. It's not the biggest issue, admittedly, but just something I thought of, just because it is can be a little awkward sometimes because of the pressure that you do have to put on that spring. So, there you have the Twisby Go. Uh, there are a number of design elements on this pen that I, I really care for. Um, and there's a few aspects that I think uh, leave room for improvement. Uh, at $18.99, it's a very interesting offering in, uh, for an entry-level pen. Uh, the more I use it and the more I play around with it, the more I, I really like this pen. Um, it is the epitome of a knockabout pen. Uh, it has an interesting look. Uh, and it's inexpensive. Um, I'm really not going to care if this thing gets beat up a little bit or if it even has a hair in it. Um, it just really adds to the character of the pen. And this pen is indeed full of character. Uh, it, it is kind of remarkable. Uh, I can imagine that down the line, if I do another top 10 list of entry-level pens, uh, that this pen uh, is very well uh, likely to end up on that list and make the cut. Um, it's a great little pen that I really feel kind of punches above its weight, if you know what I mean. Um, I would have no issue recommending this pen to someone who's looking to get into the fountain pen hobby as a starter pen. Um, and that I, I think that the interesting looks might even be attractive for folks like that. But I think it could still even be fun for more seasoned pen aficionados as well. Uh, I really think that Twisby has a winner on its hands with the Go. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here are some size comparisons for the Twisby Go. Um, in regard to some other Twisby pens, uh, here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, then here it is with the Twisby Eco. Uh, and then here it is with a Twisby Vac Mini. So I thought I'd show you how to go ahead and ink up this pen. and. The ink that we're going to use today is Colorverse Crystal Planet, which is a really nice blue. Uh, that when you purchase a Colorverse ink, uh, it comes with two bottles, comes with this large 65 milliliter bottle, and then also this very cute 15 milliliter bottle. And when you purchase the Crystal Planet, it's unlike other seasons where there's different colors. This is the same color that you receive just in the two bottles. Uh, and this is what the ink looks like. Um, that I'd say it's like a medium blue. Uh, it is, I would say it's not as pigmented as something like the Noodler's Liberty Elysium. Uh, and it's a little bit darker than something like Ackerman Passage Blau. So it's kind of right there in the middle. So let's open this up and I don't know how this is going to look from the top down, but I think you'll get the idea. I'm just opening this up and we'll see if I can kind of come in here at an angle so you can see or maybe hold it with one hand, but you just depress and then let go. And with just one fill, I think that got probably, you know, 75, 80% of the way full. Uh, this has a decent capacity or here for uh, in this ink chamber much larger I don't know the exact amount but um, I'd say it's much larger than a standard converter let me go ahead and just wipe off this nib and then put this away so we don't have any kind of incident and here we go with the writing sample for the Twisby go and this is a medium steel nib. Uh, and that with this steel nib, it's the same one that's on the Eco. You can get a little bit of line variation out of here. I wouldn't say there's a lot. Um, and I would say the ink flow is on the medium side. I, I would really not count this as a very wet pen. Um, and in regard to reverse writing, Um, that it lies down uh, a nice extra, extra fine line. And so here we go with the writing sample. Uh, 
Um, I wouldn't say this is the smoothest writing experience. It has um, a little bit of drag to it, but um, the, the ink flow is nice. There wasn't any skipping or anything along those lines. And in regards to some fast writing, it does just fine. Um, for a $19 pen, uh, that this nib works just fine. Uh, you know, I can understand how when first people first see this pen, they might think that it's a little bit on the ugly side, but I, I honestly think it's pretty cool. Um, I, I can really understand how people's first reaction is like, what is that? But then after they've had it, you've had some time to spend with it and, and see its functionality and, its, and appreciate its unique design uh, and then play around with its really fun filling system uh, that I think uh, a lot more people are going to turn around on this pen and that it's, uh, like I mentioned before, be a really big um, success for Twisby. It really brings something new to the market, especially the entry level market. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.